Hi, my name is Peter Boyle and I'm speaking today to Andrew Tudor, who's the uh, Socialist Alliance candidate uh, for the seat of Sydney. People and Planet Before Profit is the Socialist Alliance's overarching campaign slogan. Is this just a neat summary of the Alliance's values or is it also pointing to an urgent existential choice for society? Uh, well, it's both. You know, on one level, we are saying, yeah, we need um, human-centred values to come first. We need the planet to come first. And uh, the private profit capitalist motive needs to be secondary to that. Um, but also, uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, it's an existential problem. Um, you know, we're in a, an absolute climate emergency where the planet is rapidly be, uh, going to become... Um, uh, unrecognizable or somewhat uninhabitable um, un, you know in the direction that we're traveling uh, and capitalism just doesn't have the solutions for that we every problem that we face can't be solved uh, none of these problems can be solved under that uh, way of thinking you know I, I saw this cartoon uh, it's actually 20 years old and it was in the New Yorker and it's got a boardroom with uh, like a CEO is talking to each other and one is showing some sort of graph and he goes oh you know while the future uh, you know, of the planet will hold these unimaginable horrors, um, at the same time, we'll be able to make masses of profit out of that. And, uh, you, know, that you know, it's still valid 20 years later. We've been continuing on that same trajectory. You know, we, under the current system, we just cannot solve the deep problems that face us. You have made many short videos about important campaigns and issues that you have been involved in, many of them around the electorate of Sydney. Clearly, your message is that change is needed in the city and in broader society. Do you think you have been able to sketch out what an alternative socialist Sydney and socialist Australia might look like? Uh, yeah, well, in those videos, um, what I'm trying to do is bring up something that's happened in the local neighbourhood or some uh, you know, local area uh, and just show what uh, has been achieved or can be achieved that's just within our grasp. Uh, we campaigned in Friends of Erskineville for a long time for a southern entrance that uh, is now being built uh, due to a campaign where we got a lot of signatures together. Um, and now that uh, means that more people are able to uh, walk to the station, save time on their daily commute. Uh, another thing that happened recently, we all just benefited from uh, 12 days of free public transport. And uh, the numbers of people taking public transport shot up dramatically, up to you know 50% or doubled in some uh, cases. So, um, you know, it just shows that we can actually do these things. We can achieve them. We, we just need the, you know, the optimism, the, the hope, the, 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 the community campaigning uh, to get behind it, and we can achieve these things. Now, I, I, I see the two areas which I, I spend a lot of time on are um, you know, public transport and public housing. Now, just imagine if we had a really good public and active transport system and we had uh, housing as a human right available for everybody um, at a reasonable and affordable price. Well, that might mean that in the morning you would step out of your door and instead of having lots of cars noisy rushing by, you might hear the sounds of birds or children at play. Right? You'd walk past up to the station and you'd see people of all backgrounds and classes mingling in a, you know, in a, in a, in a friendly and uh, you know, um, you know, cooperative sort of way. Um, you might have shorter hours at work. There might be, uh, you know, you only work four days a week. Uh, you would be able to come home earlier. You would get home earlier because of a good transport system. You would get some exercise on your way home on the walk up to the station. Um, then that might leave you more time to pursue uh, your interests or pursue together with other people um, projects that would benefit the community. You might be able to go to a public meeting and there'd be hundreds of other like-minded people there discussing in issues of interest to you and the wider community that you could participate in. You know, this is uh, my socialist vision. You are a teacher. What insights has this given you on the potential for social change? Uh, well, I'm a maths teacher uh, and I see uh, mathematics is primarily about uh, problem solving and uh, very often actually thinking creatively, um, but using, um, using logic and reason, uh, evidence uh, and um, you know, the, uh, these things um, to, to solve problems. 
Um, also, you know, I, as a teacher, you know, I'm working in maths, but, you know, in, in science and I have a passion for history. You know, I see uh, in, in, the, in the discourse and the media a massive denigration of, of science and history. This scientific knowledge and history, the knowledge about climate change, uh, knowledge of, uh, of social movements and things that have worked in the past is just lost or papered over or ignored. Um, through education, if we had these, uh, these knowledge and these skills um, at, at, our disposable, at our disposal for many people, uh, then you know, we'd be in a much better position to push back against the lies, to, for you know, journalists to be emboldened to ask hard questions. And you know, politicians know that they wouldn't be able to give these ridiculous pat answers you know, that they're just so self-contradictory or so, you know, uh, you know in, in, in opposition to all facts and evidence, um, they, would just, they would just find that people would laugh at them and it would just be, there'd be no chance for it to get away with this. You know, the level of public uh, discussion would be raised immensely. Many people see the need for a break from the corporate profits first system, capitalism, but are not sure about whether the necessary people power the people power needed to take on the powerful vested interests that currently run society can be built up. What are your thoughts on this question? Yeah, well, um, at the moment on a lot of uh, uh, political, social, uh, you know, issues, um, it, it is often hard to get large numbers of people, but uh, together to, that with the really masses that we need. But I've seen a lot of extremely effective uh, activists. I see local councillors. I see people involved in the union movement, uh, in Extinction Rebellion and other things like that. Um, progressive uh, political parties like Socialist Alliance and the Greens. Uh, they are able to actually bring together large groups of people and, and, and mobilise the power of hundreds and thousands. Um, and we've seen that is he, through history is the only thing that works. Um, that has worked through history. You know, we managed to uh, defeat uh, apartheid in South Africa. We managed to stop the Vietnam War or more recently um, achieve uh, same-sex marriage. Um, these things uh, have been achieved in the past and we can achieve them in the future. We just need to, you know, work hard, work with uh, like-minded people, progressive forces, you know, think clearly, uh, propose bold solutions and uh, keep our eyes on the prize. We can achieve this. Now, you are a trade unionist and I believe you'll be on strike very soon. How important is the struggle to build strong, democratic and independent trade unions in the fight for system change today? Working people, we, we actually are truly the people in charge. We are the people that are creating the value in society. So it's when we have the ability to withdraw our labor that we actually exert our maximum power. And we can exert that maximum power withdrawing our labor you know, in our workplaces, with our trade unions. Um, it's when actually trade unions are at their strongest that we're actually able to achieve the strongest, uh, most uh, progressive change. I mean, just uh, in my lifetime or at the beginning of my lifetime in the 70s, uh, we had the Builders Labors Federation who just stopped working on building sites uh, and stopped, uh, you know, demolishing parks. They refused to work there, that they were actually able to force the government um, to its knees and to actually get, you know, public housing in the middle of the city uh, in a serious building to save Kelly's Bush at, at Hunter's Hill. Um, to save Centennial Park and so many theatres and, and other, other places. Uh, that, um, the right to strike has been so diminished um, over the last, uh, well, it's you know, coming up to 40 years now. Um, that right to strike has been so diminished. And at the same time, we've seen a real um, you know, harsh reduction in wages. Um, and we've seen um, all of these you know, expansion of fossil fuels, uh, and we've seen politicians become increasingly out of touch. So workers' rights, working with your union, um, being a member, getting active, uh, you know, and, and, and increasing the right to strike, 
patent bargaining, industry-wide bargaining, these uh, the anti-worker laws need to be fought against in the strongest possible terms. It's through workers' power that we're actually able to achieve real social change, so it's vitally important. <laughs>